Hey guys, Webby here. So uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different in F1 2014. We're going to go through these scenario modes. Now I've already done a couple of the very easy ones, uh, as you can see there with the bronze medals. Uh, it's because uh, it was actually a mistake on my part. I was sitting here before recording it, listening to, uh, well not listening, but uh, but talking my way through it before I realised I hadn't actually hit the record button on the video. So uh, we're going to do them again for the benefit of the video, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see how we go with it. As you can see, I've only got three bronze medals so far. Um, so you can see that over there on the right hand side. Um, I'm not exactly sure how we go about getting uh, silver and gold, but I'm, yeah, we'll, uh, well, I'll have another gold and see if we can advance that a little bit. So these very easy ones are exactly as I say, they are, they are pretty straightforward. So I uh, haven't had any, any trouble getting past them so far, but we'll do them again for the video and we'll see how we go with it. So we go into very easy, we're going to get an explanation from Crofty to tell us exactly what we have to do for each of these scenarios. Take Reclaim the position before the end of the race. So there we go. Apparently I'm number 223 in the world with one effort I've had at it. That's uh, sat, sat in a podium position with Sebastian Vettel bearing down on you. You are forced to pit for one last time with a fresh set of option tyres fitted to you as you exit the pit lane just as Seb passes it takes and takes your position. Can you catch and overtake him to regain third place before the end of the race? Well, this wasn't too difficult the, the one time I had a go at it, so let's give it a go now. We are driving a Mercedes, so uh, anything short of complete domination will be a disappointment. So this is actually the first time I've ever recorded audio uh, for the, any of the sessions I've done here in F1 2014. So uh, I do apologise to everybody for the, um, the Australian-ness of my voice, the but it is what it is. Be decided All right. Absolute final millimeters here in Melbourne. The Red Bull driver is ahead, but with a tyre wear disadvantage, this could really go either way. I'm not sure what this uh, little cutscene is supposed to move. We are actually going to rejoin it back way before then, and Sebastian hasn't made a mistake. So uh, we'll see what we can do here. Turn our fuel up. Let's go. All right. Okay, so this doesn't look like it's going to be particularly difficult. Oh dear, that's a bit silly. It's all right. We got the position, so we're uh, we're all good. Of course, if this was real life, I'd be buried in the boonies right now and my race would be over. But, we've got, uh, we've got a couple of laps to see if we can put a dent under the cars in front of us. Oh, there's enough, mate. Relax. So I'll take this opportunity to sort of give you an idea about what I feel about F1 2014, having played it for a little bit now, as you've seen with uh, a couple of the races I've done in my career with Ferrari. Um, it's it's okay. It's a it's a good improvement um, over the games that come before it. The cars are, as you probably expect, a lot more torquey, so they're a lot easier to uh, to light up the rears in, and you do have to feather the throttle a fair bit more. I do use a steering wheel. G27 from Logitech, and um, you do have to feather the throttle a fair bit more than, uh, than in previous iterations of the game to stop the, uh, the rears from being lit up with the um, increased torque of the engines. So, I managed to keep it on the track that time. We're not making any dents on who I assume is Nico in front of us. in second place but um, no it's it's a, it's, a, it's a nice game it's certainly not simulator style physics that you would get in R Factor or I Racing but um, it is a nice it's a nice looking game and the, the cars handle well enough to be enjoyable so um, you know it, it's well worth getting as a Formula 1 fan and if you want something that's uh, will challenge you a little bit more than the previous than the previous versions of the game then this is certainly a uh, this is certainly worth its, uh, uh, I think, decreased price tag on, uh, on F1 2013 and 2012 as well. So, all right, so I've managed to hold on there pretty well. We're going to cross the line here well ahead of Sebastian Vettel, and we're going to finish third. But because I'm in the number 44 Mercedes and I haven't won a race, it's my job to look miserable and um, 
Uh, like I've had like uh, like someone just shot my cat or something like that. So no, I'm only kidding, of course. Mismanagement of the tyres came back to haunt Red Bull today, causing them to lose out on a podium in the final stretches of the race. I think that certainly is a higher score than I got last time. I think I finished further ahead of Sebastian this time than I did in the last in the last one. We managed to put 13.4 seconds on him in the last two laps. So I mean that's on very easy. So we can't really can't read too much into that. We'll see the little celebrations here, which, like I said, are inaccurate because I should be looking completely miserable and upset at this result because I didn't win a race. And um, my driver's suit does say Hamilton. Actually, there's quite an appropriate response at the moment. Yeah, looks quite right. And uh, and before anybody says anything, it is both ways. Both Mercedes drivers tend to look a bit miserable when they don't win the race. I guess that's uh, how you expect things to be when you've got such a dominant car. And really, the, the only best position you can finish in is in first place. So that was a uh, that was a bit of fun there, and uh, we'll uh, progress on now to the uh, next one. At Spain. Fend off the attack to repeat Williams' famous 2012 win. Yes, we're going to repeat the 2012 win in 2014. So after putting your wounds in the first place in the Spanish Grand Prix, you find yourself being chased by Fernando Alonso, who is determined to win it for his home crowd. Can you stay ahead of him to record a famous victory for your team? Well, we will certainly do our very best. So Spain's another one of these tracks where I've only driven a couple of laps here, and that was only in the uh, in the scenario mode that I mistakenly did earlier, thinking it was recording. So, um, and we're on a hard tire, so you'll notice that we have a significant Spanish lower amount of grip. The Williams is leading, but even that might not be enough against the relentless pace of the crowd favourite, Fernando Alonso. All right, here we go. I wish I had some higher res skins on these cars. Up close, they do still look quite pixelated. But from a distance, they, they certainly look quite nice. And the wounds look good from T-Cam. Oh, understeer. Just pushing a bit too hard there. On these hard tyres, there is a fair, fair reduction in traction. Oh dear. Didn't do that before. Wilting under the pressure of the uh, relentless pace of Fernando behind me. car just does not want to turn that corner. It's a strange hairpin that, uh, no matter what game you played in, whether it be an R Factor or this game, it's a, um, I don't think I've ever once, for the thousands of laps I've done around Barcelona, ever got that corner right. And I do miss the old, the old first sec, uh, the old final second here at Barcelona. Oh, no traction for the last corner. We still managed to put large enough commando. If we weren't on very easy, I'm sure that Fernando would have driven straight past me with a wave of the hand by now after that first lap. Certainly not wearing out the tarmac at any of these apex apexes, but we're doing what we have to do. So I imagine that these scenarios will get, will get harder as we uh, progress through them. These very easy ones are merely a warm up. So I've managed to put five seconds on the commando, so this is all going relatively well. So Spain is a track, it's obviously predominantly of the F1 circuits that uh, we actually race at. It's the one we use most for testing down the years. Um, mainly because it's a good mix of, uh, of straight lines and uh, corners. It, it has a lot of corner profiles that are mimicked uh, throughout the rest of the championship. Maybe I shouldn't try and talk too much while I'm driving. But uh, I don't mind that there's a track. I certainly preferred it when it had the old last sector where it was just a fast straight burst to the, uh, to the finish line. But uh, 
as a lot of my friends would know, there is a particular corner of track that I, I don't like so much. Up there it's a uh, campsite. Check out the situation. No, we're okay. You're creating a good lead over Alonso. You're around two seconds a lap after that. So we've increased that gap with Nano to 8.2. Car doesn't want to stick to the track on these tyres, but we're still getting the job done. Yes, it's a tricky circuit, Spain, because uh, a lot of the corners feel like they have multiple lines through them, so um, you can get quite a pace disparity here when you're racing online. From the line, you know, in R Factor and uh, those kind of games. Certainly it would be interesting to drive around here with a dynamic driving line. This last sec you always feel like you can go faster. But uh, usually if you go faster it ends in very, very bad things happening to you or your vehicle. Like having no traction going through the third last corner. But we kept it all together and we won the race, and in the end, that's what Formula is all about. Alright, so our second scenario challenge comes to a close with a relatively comfortable, comfortable win there. Probably only a bronze medal. I don't think that was quite even as good as last time. So. And just like in 2012, we see a Williams driver defending against the Ferrari to bring home a win in the battle for the Spanish Grand Prix. There's David Croft, the man who I think would get excited. If, uh, as soon as he gets up in the morning and uh, his wife asks him what he wants for breakfast, I think I'll have some muesli, sweetie, because that would be the greatest thing ever. He uh, certainly doesn't have a, uh, a low volume setting, does David Croft. There's Fernando. He's happy enough. He should be happy getting second in the Ferrari of this year. Uh, Mercedes there in third place, which is obviously a massive underperformance for those guys, so uh, good for them. All right, we're off to the uh, next one, which is uh, at Canada. Take advantage of Hamilton's engine problems and finish on the podium. So if we have a look here, number 145 from that first effort. It was pretty straightforward the first time I'd done it, so it's a uh, high score of 126. Yeah, best time of 342, so that'd be my... They're my personal, my personal best. See if we can go better this time. Always got to try and go slightly faster every lap. I don't know what ASOS.com uh, what dot com is, but uh, McLaren certainly have been running it for most of the year. All right. Run some nice super softs in a nice Red Bull. Can Red Bull take advantage here and snatch a podium in these final few laps? This should be very sticky to the road. I've done this before. It was, uh... Alright, here we go. Hamilton off already. That's good for us. Alright, let's get about chasing down Kimi Raikkonen. I am driving car one, so technically this guy would be my teammate for next season, probably. Once Fernando makes his announcement. Ah, uh, Circuit de Gilles Villeneuve, one of those tracks that always seems to produce uh, an interesting race, even though the track layout itself doesn't look like it would be conducive to, a, um, to epic racing. I think they might have reprofiled those curves this year with the, uh, with the last chicane. Feels a bit easier. Closed right down on Kimmy. Should be able to get him up here. Superior traction. Alright, engineer's certainly happy. I think we'll 
be able to do anything about the cars in front of us. Keep an eye on our fuel situation. This Red Bull feels nice and hooked up, I've got to say. A lot of that is probably the, the super soft tyre, but... Definitely feels like a very nice car to drive. I think superior to the Ferrari I've been driving in Korea mode. As to be expected, I, I guess. We could probably push harder through there. We better just make sure we've got enough fuel to get to the end of the race. Might, might know we finish inside of Fernando here. I don't know if it's the shading or something of that car, but uh, it doesn't really necessarily look that red uh, from different points. Probably not close enough for a DRS here. But we might not need it. That went well. And we have got DRS. Just to defend. Not really losing your mate. get a double, double kick at DRS to finish second. That went really well that time. <clears throat> Alright, so that's the end of the three that I've completed so far. Wait and see what Crofty says about that. Oh, still only bronze. Oh. <sighs> Still only a bronze. What do we have? What do we have to do here, Crofty? Well, Nico certainly looks rather happy with his performance. Me. Second place, shrug of the shoulders, what could we do? I think Sebastian will quite happily take a uh, second place right now. Okay, so that's all, of, that's the three that I've completed so far. So now, it's a, uh, it's a new thing take for us. Recover from a mistake and take the win. With the light rain falling across the circuit, the entire field has started the race in intermediates. From pole position, you have built up a 10 second lead. But just as things are looking good, you hit the curb and spin the car. As you rush to rejoin the track, two cars pass you, dropping down a third. Can you regain composure and chase them down and take the win? Now, this will actually be very, very difficult, I think. Um, but maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> I know that kind of sounded silly. But I've driven in the rain before at Malaysia. And these cars are actually quite difficult to drive in the rain to the same pace as the AI. They seem to have incredible amounts of traction um, the Mercedes in the wet. were sitting comfortable in first but a lapse in concentration has seen them go off track and allow two cars to go past the car clearly has the performance but is it enough to take the win let's ask that guy in the balloon up there he'll know all about it all right let's see what we can do driving I think Nico's Mercedes Like Spa with the, uh, the 
time. some pretty average driving. We managed to get back into the lead here and win the race. That will be a bronze for sure. In fact, if there was anything sub-bronze but still a pass, that's what we would have got. But it is car six, so therefore it isn't the best and overtaking car in the field. concentration was almost very costly for the Mercedes driver and their team, but a brilliant recovery saw them take the top step of the podium. That's right. Still at 1,200, 1,200, or 12,000 points, I should say. Sebastian Tappy with the result. Okay, so that's another one of our very easy challenges passed. So we move on to the final Bring one. The position Bar back end. from your teammate. Whilst fighting your way through traffic, you're blocked by a slower car. Sat just behind you when this occurs, your rookie teammate Kevin Magnussen takes advantage and puts you in a cheeky and puts in a cheeky overtake. He races off as you are left struggling with the overtake to your back markers. Can you get past these slower cars and catch Magnussen? Retake your position, assert your position as team number one. Well, let's see if we hit all the right buttons, shall we? Let's see uh, Sebastian's bronze helmet, which actually up close looks quite nifty. I can't remember where exactly he ran that, but there's a 
nice looking helmet when you see it like that. Oh, Not so much. Cheeky. That's rookie McLaren driver has just overtaken his vastly more experienced teammate. Could we be seeing the deciding factor in who McLaren chooses their number one this season? Yeah, the McLaren looks very sleek in this game. Uh, always does with the silver car, but uh, let's see what we can do here. Turn up the fuel mix. Let's see what we can do about these guys. Racing Kevin. Thank you for that. I thought I was racing everybody. Bahrain. Actually, it looks like quite a. Uh, it's quite nice here at night. It's the first time uh, this, this game was the first time we've been around here at night. Nui. Nui ships out of the way. We didn't get DRS. It's unfortunate. We've got two laps to catch and pass Kevin Magnus. Just told me I was racing in mixed messages, guys. Hold on to this position and you will have completed your objective. Because I've heard like race engineers say that sort of stuff to drivers all the time during races. Hold on to this position, you will have passed your objective. Pretty sure the only driver who ever hears that one is the guy who finishes first. Alright. So we'll pass Kevin here. Enjoy some Barini scenery for the last couple of laps. Leave the fuel up so we can put in some quick laps whilst I get a text message. very much in these scenarios. That's high wear light, pretty good. Probably shouldn't get caught out by too much. These uh, scenarios will increase in difficulty as we go on. They're all pretty easy at the moment. Even with the uh, terrible driving at Austria last time out, I still managed to pass that one without overtaking Sebastian on the last lap. Put on a pretty good gap here to Kevin already. Surprisingly, Mercedes wins the race. Alright, through the last corner, clip the apex, hang the car out, don't pick up too much wheel spin, get to the line, move over to salute the team. Job done, sixth place. It's about the best it could be hoped for. driving from the rookie McLaren driver was ultimately overshadowed by their more experienced teammate who continued to reinforce their position as the team's number one. Okay, well that one comes to a close and courtesy of Crofty, we know all about it. Set to bronze medal again. Certainly collecting enough bronze here to uh, 
do an old army and look at that. I'm just, I'm just happy in the pits there. Always let the cameras in there to celebrate like that, of course. Achievement unlocked. Bronzed. That's nice. Well, maybe we start getting better medals as we move up. So let's shift up to easy and take a look. So we're going to raise the tempo with these scenarios. Manage your fuel and fend off the chasing pack. Overtake back markers and put space between yourself and your nearest rival. Or fight your way through the field to snatch victory. Success in each of these scenarios will reward you with a bronze medal to add to your collection. Oh! So... It doesn't say anything about that in very easy. Yeah, sulfur bronze medals as a reward. There we go. So it helps if you actually read the instructions. Or uh, RTFM, as we say in engineering space. And I'll just respond to the text. There we go. Makes for great video sending text messages. Let's check out what we've got here. Take advantage of a collision between the race leading Red Bulls to claim a podium finish. So when the race leading Red Bull cars collide during a closing stage of the German Grand Prix, they are forced to pit one after the other for repairs. Sat within the chasing pack, you see a chance to take a podium position. Can you overtake the car in third to claim an unlikely podium? And the global leaderboard, number one, Lewis Hamilton. I don't know if that's really Lewis Hamilton. That would seem unlikely to me. Take Let's take a look. And here we are at Sepang when we're really going to Germany. on the pit wall are livid and you can understand why. Red Bull had the 1-2 in the bag until that coming together. Both the cars will have to pit and that will give the chasing pack a chance. Yes, that's right, Crofty. That will give the piecing, the chasing pack a chance. So here we go. Here we are at the Hockenheim. Hockenheim ring. Now we turn three. Down the back straight. Let's check our fuel. We have enough to ramp it up. See what we can do. So we're chasing down Jensen. We're in a Mercedes. So this should be pretty easy. I'm gonna be in trouble if I get to one of these uh one of these scenarios at Sochi. Sochi is the only track I haven't driven on yet in any uh, form of uh, racing. Mistakes. That will rob us of any chance. That is unfortunate. We 
might even get Fernando here. about unlikely podium, we've taken an unlikely victory, but we're on a Mercedes, so it's incredibly likely. It's fair to say Red Bull will be having serious words with both of their drivers this afternoon, but one team who are sure to be celebrating Mercedes, who capitalised on the situation to gain a podium. Gain a podium, gain a double podium, a victory even. So, uh, yeah, Red Bull would have been hoping they were over those days when uh, Mark Webber left the team. But this should be a very jubilant uh, me getting out of the car. I should be taking headrest out uh, if the game was accurate. I, I can't see any realism in this game now. No headrest being taken out. Is Fernando forever on the podium in the scenario mode by the looks of it. Well, that was good fun. Still quite easy. Right. So, we've gone past that one. Let's check out the next one. Maintain second place whilst managing fuel. After an aggressive stint in the middle of the race, you're looking good for a podium position. However, your push to the front has left you dangerously low on fuel. With three laps remaining and enough fuel for one quick lap before having to dial your engine down, can you hold off the faster cars behind you to hold on to second place? Well, see what we can do. Into Lagos. That's where obviously Formula 1 just was weekend past. In Australia, the uh, Brazilian Grand Prix is always so terrible. Because it's on at like uh, four o'clock in the morning. Ferrari, their driver will be trying to manage what little fuel they have, and it's going to take all his experience to maintain this position until the end of the race. So here we are, driving Fernando's Ferrari. All right, so. hold these guys off. We should be able to. I don't think they're particularly quick. It is a fun track to drive here in Interlagos. Such a short lap. Run 
down to the end of the first sector after getting out of the center S's. Two to go. Legendary turn four down at uh, Lake Descent, what it's called in English. Um, my Portuguese is a little rusty, and by rusty I mean non-existent. Japanese, Japanese I can handle, but uh, Portuguese, Portuguese I don't know anything of. I'd be heavily penalised for those kind of exits out of that corner if the difficulty was a little bit higher, I think. Alright, so we have one to go. Then just get our fuel back to optimal. Be able to do this pretty easy. Barring mistakes, of course. I always feel like you can push so hard through the first three corners here in Interlagos. We don't have to conserve fuel as much anymore, so we can push through these corners a little bit better. Make up some black time just for the just for the hell of it. As another text message comes in, and I feel like Kimmy Raikkonen getting all out of shape through there. harder now that we're not worried about fuel, as unsurprisingly, Mercedes wins the race, surprisingly, Ferrari will finish second, we drive past the pit wall, salute the team, job done, second place. saw the Ferrari make big gains. They were able to manage the fuel superbly and secured a great result for them and the team. Well, that was a uh, that was a good result for us. We got ourselves another medal to add to our bronze collection. Let's see what that puts us on the leaderboard after we see celebrations, of course. Hamilton won, and therefore he looks happy. The only time he looks happy, and even then it's questionable. All right, so we've moved, we've moved on from that. Now we have to go to China. Recover from a five-place grid penalty to finish fifth. After a strong qualifying performance, he developed a gearbox problem and forced to change the unit. This change comes at a cost, and you are awarded a five-place grid penalty, which drops you down the field. With the car now repaired and performing well, can you take fifth place and achieve your objective for the race? Driving a Force India? Oh, finally not driving one of the top cars. Well, at China, I was I won my first career race there. I forgot to check the weather conditions. Hopefully, it's not wet. Didn't say anything about it being wet, so we should be we should be okay. This should be good fun. Get the race with the pack a little bit. Force India are sat in seventh today. A gearbox change saw a solid qualifying punished by a five-place grid penalty. Could we see their driver recover the positions throughout this race? Yes. Well, we will certainly do our utmost. So do I actually get to start this race, or how is this going to work? I do get to start this race. Without serving a grid place penalty, the team who adjusted our objective for the day. Your objective is to finish fifth. Fifth today. Turn up our fuel. We'll just clean drive right through everybody. Great work. We have 
If you get about fifth, if you get about fifth, I think we'll just try and win this one, eh? Conservatively like that, we don't have to worry about protecting the tires in a three lap race. It's really tough around here when we have the Grand Prix. Um, tire wear was, uh, was pretty extreme, and the performance drop off was also extreme. And the AI always seem to uh, protect their tires better and have better pace on more tires. But the peak performance of the player seems to be higher. Comfortably ahead of the uh, pack here. So I feel like the cars are still set up for uh, 2013 gearing. Well, we are really only using seven of the gears. I know eight, there's more there for a uh, faster tracks and DRS and things like that, but. Another text message comes through mid-race. There we go, there's the temperature warning I was talking about before, actually seeing a overheating of the tires. I was seeing that, uh, I think I can in Malaysia we got a bit, I was also having it here for the Turn 1 complex. All the way during the race. But that's, I don't know whether, I'm sure it doesn't make performance. It doesn't seem to hang around long enough for it to be a problem. You can probably keep an eye on the temperatures though. See how long it lasts. It'll be interesting to know. Tricky complex here in the middle at Shanghai. You always feel like you can go harder through there, but it doesn't really reward aggressive driving. It rewards sort of smooth, particularly this corner here. You've got to be really patient on the throttle. You get full traction through here, it compromises you all the way down the back straight. We'll we give this game one, another thing as well, it's got really nice ambience. You can see there's a bit of, uh, a bit of fog in the air, it looks quite realistic. There's certainly a lot of things it can do better, but there's a num number of things it does quite nicely. There's too many people in the grandstands, we never see that many people in Shanghai. That's okay, it's good enough. You can see that front left overheating there, and yeah, it probably did affect performance. The, there was definitely the front end washed out, but I was going a bit too quick through there. So I have to say, I'm sure it does affect performance. Team's very, very happy with the customer team today. It's a shame that Force India's best ever driver, Giancarlo Vizicella, could not be here to enjoy this today. Watch Force India win their first ever race. Of course, they got their second ever podium. Uh, early this year in Bahrain, in the, um, in, uh, the real stuff, Sergio Perez. Kind of perplexing that uh, Nico Hülkenberg's yet to stand on the Formula 1 podium there. Guys a start, but uh, stars haven't aligned for him yet. Anyway, of course Indy's going to win their first race, and there it is. Should be very happy with that. Should be fist pumping and stuff like that. What are you doing in that car?
forgetting that Force India's driver had suffered a five-race grid penalty today. Their driver refused to be pushed into the middle of the field by gaining positions throughout the race. Yeah, gaining positions throughout the race, like those six he gained in the very first two corners throughout the race. Could have a bit more dynamic commentary. Commentary would be nice full stop. They could get in, uh, well, maybe not Croft, but uh, definitely Martin Brundle would be good to hear in these games. No Kingfisher sponsorship on that suit. Quite understandably, really. That's probably why they don't have the podium in the game. Don't want to promote alcohol. It's a shame. Podiums in these games would be very, very good. Okay. So another one of those comes to a close. Let's check out the fourth one. Where are we off to? Canada. Finish the race in first. Wow. That was to the point. Having thought, fought your way through the field from last place in wet conditions to the Canadian Grand Prix, can you now do the impl implausible and overtake Jensen Buttons McLaren or just three laps of the race to go? Oh, I'm sure we'll get close. Uh, it's Marcus Ericsson in his uh, Ronnie Peterson. I think he's Ronnie Peterson tribute helmet. Monaco. With the chaos of the rain starting to clear, we can see without any doubt that Red Bull intend to make this a race to remember. From dead last to potential race winner, they could actually do this. Oh, it would have been probably more fitting if it was actually driving as Jensen Button for this one, but uh, that's okay. I don't mind driving the Red Bull. Stella and he's uh, Fernando, you know, we know the talent you have, kind of messages. Oh, lit up the screen's purple there. We'll keep the fuel on standard, it's never really an optimal, so let's go get him. Long to do this. We have a gap of about three seconds between you and the next car. I wonder if that McLaren's going to have a straight line speed advantage. deal now. Just enjoy the run under the Pirelli signs. Used to be the casino signs, of course. One last one. Past the wall of champions. And it's over. There's a nice bronze medal for us again. Yeah, an inspiring race because races are inspiring. Oh, 
Oh, I'm an F1 fan, and not even I'd say something silly like that. Anyway. Moving right along, looking at some celebrations. Well, Jensen's happy with the result. Couldn't have a race in F1 2014 without the, the Mercedes on the podium as well. So there we go, another one bites the dust, one to go in easy. Hungary. First position whilst navigating past the back markers. Having taken the lead of the Hungarian Grand Prix with just a few laps remaining, you have a chance to equal Michael Schumacher's record four wins at the circuit. As Kimi Raikkonen puts on a charge and does his best to stop you, can you overtake a large pack of back markers and put space between your cars and go on to win the race? Driving as the Hamiltron. Well, we'll certainly do our best. Mercedes has a good chance at taking first here today. He just needs to make sure he can find his way through the back markers before he's challenged from behind. All right. See what we can do. How much fuel we got? Well, that's always the best place to take over a car is in the middle of a corner. That's the normal stuff a race. The race engineer says to his driver to keep him calm. Remind him of records he could break. Look out, pull the rest of sideways in the track. Goodness. That's not good. Usually I wouldn't say goodness there either. It's only for the, uh, to keep the uh, video G rated. Alright, here we go. Last corner. Some full traction. So I've managed to gap Kimmy a little bit. So. down. Bets on Ericsson or Kobayashi. Say Ericsson. Well, only Ericsson will drive like a complete numpy like that, so that's fine. Well spotted me. Looks like we have Bianchi. Get well soon, Jules. DRS again, the gift that just keeps on giving. Sector after sector.
There we go. We win the race. No fist pump for anything. It's just what's expected down at Mercedes. Mercedes will be ecstatic today. Having only the back of the pack to worry about, their driver took the car to a well-deserved first place finish. Don't know why the other cars bother, to be honest. Moving right along, let's watch some celebrations and then go back and see what our next challenge is. I am the Messiah. Oh, as they've got that ridiculous watch on the gloves. I hate that thing. Kimmy! Kimmy's on the podium. Look at that. Looks about as excited as what Kimmy usually is as well. The Age of Bronze achievement unlocked. Thank you, Steam. Okay, so we're done with easy. Next, on the medium, where it says, aimed at experienced drivers, these scenarios require a wide range of skills and will reward you with silver medals. Attempt to regain your place and finish in the points after damaging your car. Beat your rival in a hard-fought race, or take advantage of the safety car to get the jump on those around you and gain a podium position. Let's see what we can do. Number one. The USA. Take advantage of a safety car and finish on the podium. With the weekend having started out well, a series of mistakes within the race sees, sees you sat in a disappointing sixth place. However, luck seems to be with you when an incident in the final phase of the race causes a safety car to come out on track, which bunches up the field and puts you at the back of contention. Can you take advantage of this situation and finish on the podium? Well, I haven't driven many times around Austin, so we'll see how this goes. And uh, I saw the next one is Sochi. That will, uh, that will be it fun thing, because I haven't driven around so cheap before, so it'll be a learning experience for all of us. Nearing the end now, and after a safety car has bunched up the pack, we're in for an entirely new battle. First, second, and third are all up for grabs. Safety car in this lap, who will we see on the podium? Alright. How's our fuel? Lean it off whilst the safety car's out. DRS is enabled very early, it should take two laps for that to come up. I guess it's uh, prudent in this scenario that we have DRS. Austin goes. So Fernando will have DRS behind me, I'm sure.
so this is certainly a bit more challenging than easy. Apologies for my quietness, as I, as I was saying, I don't really know Austin very well, but we're doing our best. So. so there's... the AI is definitely faster. Oh dear, we've done a version. Eyes are going off, but I seem to be struggling from a distinct lack of grip. So much so that we actually have Fernando all over us. So I'll have to be defensive to align. It's okay, we made it. It was a good result for us in the end. First silver medal was that. looking a long way off before the safety car, but the Williams took full advantage of a bunched up field to secure a hard fought podium finish. Certainly did. It's looking like a realistic result. Two Mercedes and a Williams on the podium. Look at that, look how happy they are. Everyone's happy. Okay. Now, this is gonna be tough. Finish in the top 10 after pitting for a new front wing. We'll see what we can do here. Like I said, this is a new one for me. Whilst fighting for ninth in the damn condition, make contact with a car ahead and lose part of your front wing. With the car undrivable, you're forced to pit, losing three hard-earned places in the process. With a new front wing fitted, can you claw back these places and finish in the points? Well, as I said before, so everybody knows, I haven't driven any laps of Sochi whatsoever, so we might have to have a couple of goes at this one, but uh, we'll see how we go. I don't even remember the track so much from uh, from watching the Grand Prix. Disaster for the Lotus driver. And it's wet He's as lost well, the front so. wing, and after doing so well, being mere laps away from his first points of the season, it's going to be frustration in the pits as he watches the cars pass him by. And I have to drive the car with that the uh, front wing. I'm unsure where the pit entry even is set. Oh, there we go, it's telling me where it is, look at that. Oh, no, 
nice thinking game. Like I said, we might have a couple of goes at this one. Let's see how we go. closing in on these guys, probably more down to uh, my lack of knowledge of the tracks. I'm trying to drive off the mini-map at the moment while I'm learning it. I'd say we're giving up a fair bit of time for these guys. Catching them, but just not convinced that we're catching them fast enough. All right, two to go. Let's see what we can do.
traction, no traction. That was completely accidental. to not trying to overtake, even if I make a mistake. Ah, I wish I knew this track better. Oh, disappointing. We'll do this one again. And as we look towards the bottom of the table, a disastrous collision with the car ahead in the latter stages of the race meant that one of the Lotus drivers lost out on a points finish today. Yep, so we're just going to do this one again. All right, let's hope that a bit of knowledge of the track now goes a long way. Remembering we don't have the front wing here.
slightly ahead of where we were last time, so...
Done it. Wow. That was so tough. Because I didn't know the track. Alright, we've done a good job there. Disaster struck the Lotus driver today, who took off damage to the front wing in the final stages here in Sochi. Fortunately for the team, their driver dug deep and brought home the points. There we go. Oh, we're all happy in the Lotus garage. Look at that. Don't think they'll be adding a fourth star to that anytime soon. Even the cleaner's happy. Look at that. Thanks, mate. All right. On to the next one. Spa. Ahead of your championship rival. Driving a Marusha. With the race in full flow, it looks like your closest championship rival is running a strategy which matches your own. Having both pitted to fit the option tyres, he beats you out of the pit lane by a very small margin. Can you get your tyres up to temperature and overtake him in the final stint of the race? Driving a Marusha against a Caterham by the looks of it. A Mushadoi. Interesting. But... Two championship rivals have entered the pit at the same time. There's not much left in this one now, but both drivers are looking to push their cars to the absolute limit. Yes. Who will come out on top? Oh, the flexi wings. I think that Marusha needs to be investigated. Okay. Let's have fuel. By the beautiful Arden Forest. That in the pool. Jeez. No traction there.
sorry, Camille, and I mean the rubber game. Job done, a little bit unconventional, but we got there in the end. He was very, very slow. Turn the fuel down, turn that off, cruise it home. It wasn't even really a battle, was it? That's yeah, not a bad looking car from TKM Miss Marisha. It's a shame they're now bust. Along with uh, other things, obviously, that happened in Japan. It's a little bit cold. Guess uh, the one didn't really warm it up. We'll put six seconds on the belly. Excuse me, we almost put some cars in front of us. together threw up the question of who was going to come out of this race on top but there's no doubt that after the stop it was the Marussia who outshined their championship rival to get themselves ahead in the tables wow look at that are we happy in the garage yep Oh, there we go. Another medium one bites the dust. Two to go. Tifosi Triumph. Well, I know where this one's going to be. Capitalize on an engine failure to take first place. Here we go. With the end of the race approaching, it looks like Sebastian Vettel has a race one. Whilst you're stuck at the back of the chasing pack, as Seb's engine lets go, can you take advantage of your position? Pass the cars ahead of you and win a famous victory. Well, there's only one way to find out. All right, Monza, here we come. We're drawing a close to today's race with Vettel holding on to a strong lead. It's going to take disaster for the Germans first place to be contested now. Look at our fuel. Oh, look at that. We have lots of fuel. See what we can do 
through here, all right? Here we're using eighth gear. Very good. That's from a long way back. That one. DRS. Yep. Come up for you, Jensen. Boy. Okay, well, let's just start that one again. We'll take it back a look at that one on the replay, but uh, yeah. Jensen put his car in the middle of the track, didn't really have uh, anywhere to go, that's unfortunate, but we'll give this a go again, turn our fuel back up, try again. Not convinced I'll be close enough to Kevin, had a bad run through uh, the Parabolica. Oh dear. It's mistake city now. Alright, just get our head down. Stayed more to the inside and caught me out. No excuse. Carry on, Woods. Get in this time. Some sort of incredible lap to catch these two, I think. We lost too much time with that accident down to turn one on the first time lap against Magnuson.
might get lucky here. Now, can we close up the Hamilton through the Lesmo? It's going to be a tight run thing, you know. We've got the RS. Engine's running hot. Slow onto the back straight. Had no grip there. It's okay that we're in front. These guys are right behind. Now ah, we got it. Pretty easy in here. Good work. Oof. Kimmy, victory. Sebastian Vettel today. The pack following was bunched up and it was quite the fight, but it was the Ferrari driver we saw take the checkered flag. That's right. Top victory. That's the victory. You guys did a fantastic job. Well done. Another medium one down, one to go. It's a shame that one took two, that one took us two bites of the cherry as well. But uh, uh, well, that's why I'm not really in Formula One, I guess. Capitalize on an engine for last one. Eleventh place or better to beat your constructors' championship rivals. Well, that won't be really hard in real life, considering that they won't be there. After a hard-fought season, your team behind your team behind closest rivals Marussia within the standings. With just five laps of the season to go, can you overtake the Marussia drivers and capture 11th place to leapfrog them in the Constructors' Championship? Well, if it was real life, it won't be a problem. But here we are, off to Abu Dhabi for the last of our medium challenges. What are the hard ones are going to be like? It's the final few laps of the season, and the only battle left undecided is the constructors' fight between Caterham and Marussia. Caterham need their driver to get 11th or better, but is it too great a task? Well, we'll see. Depends. Am I Kobash here or am I Ericsson? Looks like I'm going to be. Time rather than distance, but we'll see.
pretty sure that's the first time anyone at uh, Caterham's ever had to say that to one of their drivers. down at one. so bloody slow.
Angels. I thought that wasn't going to happen either. At least not sort of... Yeah, I guess you are closing them down pretty quickly, but you're not just sort of driving past people at rapid rates. Caterham will be very pleased to have beaten their constructor rivals today, and with the defining moment taken in the very final stages, their driver is sure to be in the limelight. Damn right. Always in the limelight. Could, because, you know, Caterham's green, and there's a bit of lime, as you can see there. So the lights down there are lime. And that's a terrible joke, and I apologise to everybody for making it. There's the cleaner. He's happy. Very good. He's probably also the CEO down at Caterham. Alright, Silverado. Finished all the silver objectives. Now there's only the five hard ones to go. These scenarios aren't for the faint-hearted. Prove your skill in the rain at Malaysia. Defend your position in a broken car or try to make a memorable win from the back of the grid. Complete each of these scenarios and you'll be awarded with gold medal. But be warned, they'll test your driving skills to the limit. But we're going to save that for next time, guys. So it's been a pleasure hanging out with you for a little while. And uh, hope to talk to you again soon and hope you enjoyed the video. Bye for now.